Good morning, afternoon, evening, whenever you're watching this. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to d Dispatch. It's just a duel today. It's just me and Brett. Um, Gabe's enjoying some hard work time off, so hopefully he's having fun. You're going to see a lot of us starting the next week, y'all. Uh, we got, from the date of this recording, this is Saturday, five days to go. Five days to go till opening day, and then baseball every day I'm so until ready. the All Star break, and then we get a couple days off, and then it's right back at it. So very excited here. Uh, Ross is really starting to find, uh, really come into play. But the big news this week, Brett, it's not the Diamondbacks. It yeah. is what what news dropped when they had the Soul Series, which I'm gonna. I, I might go on a rant about that because that that it, it still doesn't make sense. You have the season starts and like actual games count, and then you have that both teams go back and play exhibition j- games for yeah. a couple days, and then they re- should have just had it. everybody start spring training early, start that series, and then. Because there's no reason for them to go back and play games that don't matter. Like, it, yeah. it doesn't make sense to me. Um, but they did split the series 1-1. Uh, Dodgers won the uh, first game. And then there was just like a, a hit fest in game two. Like, that was Yamamoto. That was, I woke up. Yama- and I, let me tell you, Yama- waking up and being like, oh, yeah, Yamamoto started. And then seeing Twitter, it's like, Yamamoto went one inning, five runs, and was taken out. I was like, let the agendas be fed. Right, it. it's it was funny, but the big news was the news with Shohei Otani. Um, Dodgers fired his translator, and after that, I don't know what's the truth and what's not. I really don't. Yeah, yeah say so for those that probably, I mean, I feel like if you're listening to this, you're probably pretty in tune with what's going on. But quick rundown: uh, Shohei's interpreter who's been his interpreter since he came over in 2018, uh, was fired by the Dodgers and ended up giving a uh, statement to, uh, I think, Tisha Thompson, not Trisha. I always, always, always say Trisha, but Tisha Thompson of ESPN um, on why he was fired and basically going into, oh, yeah, he was four and a half million in gambling debt. And Otani, uh, or like Shohei, uh, was a good friend and helped him pay off some of his gambling debt, gave him the money to you know pay it off as like a loan. Uh, but then apparently Shohei's lawyers and camp came out, immediately had him retract the statement. They said, that's not true. Shohei never knew anything about that. This is all a massive theft that he is uh, a victim of, and we're going to be doing our own investigation. And even Mizuhara like, went and like was like, oh, no, everything I said, that wasn't true. This is actually what happened. And after the story has now changed for the third time, I agree. I don't know exactly what's going on, but... Uh, Ipe does uh, insist that Shohei was not betting on any games, that this was not like a Sho- Shohei sending him money to place the bets, uh, and that he didn't bet on baseball at all, that he just bet on other yeah. sports. Um, there's there's a lot to unpack with all but this. There's a lot to unpack. How do you get into a hole of four and a half million? How bad? Oh, the only thing is either he placed a lot of bets and didn't hit – or he placed a couple very large ones that didn't hit. Yeah. Um, but tinfoil, like conspiracy theory time, it was Otani that was betting. <laughs> and he pays the fall guy. But I don't actually believe that. I just think it's fun to do the whole conspiracy theory. Yeah, exactly. Shohei's not that stupid. Yeah, There's that's... no way Shohei's that stupid. So that one is more of... Because I'm so anti LA, exactly. that's the only reason that I go there. I don't actually believe it because it yeah, would be and, it would be bad for the entire sport if. Oh did. yeah, and I agree. Like I will meme on it, and you know, be like, oh, sure. like the the sickos meme of the guy at the window. It's like, ha ha ha. Yes, it's like that's me. Just because he's a Dodger. If this would have happened when Shohei was on the Angels, if this news would have broken on like when he was there, I guarantee you the reactions. I mean, especially probably a lot of us on the, in the D-backs fan base and just baseball in general would probably be more like I'd say ninety-five percent. Oh no, Shohei, you're you're being taken advantage of by your friend Ipe. Like oh no, 
and again, I think that is probably what like happened. I genuinely don't think like Shohei Otani doesn't strike me as the kind of dude like a Pete Rose um, or like a uh, Calvin Ridley or all those words. Like they're betting on the sports that they're a part of. Like I, I genuinely could see Ipe having uh, like just a massive gambling debt to the point like having it because he put so many large bets. And, and again, it's some of the tinfoil. It's weird. I'm thinking like, like it's like he did like one figures. of like six figures. That like yeah, he, he put like a hundred K on one and 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 like he just kept doing it. Um yeah, but so it is interesting. Game one of the Soul Series in the ninth inning, you see that clip and they're like buddy buddy in the dugout. Like they're yeah. like it's it's very weird because like literally after that game is when the report came out. Um and Major League Baseball did announce on Friday that they are beginning their investigation into the, uh, the whole situation. Um, if Shohei wasn't on, if Shohei was on any other, literally anyone else but like Dodgers or Yankees, I'd be like, oh, this freaking sucks. Yeah. Generally. I mean, it still does suck because I agree. It's, it's not it great for baseball if he is betting. I don't think he is. Like, no, it's just fun to. Go, like there are there are things about it that are a little bit like uh maybe they're not fully oh ban him from baseball ban him from the league you know he needs to go to jail like nothing like that it is a little like okay I get you know you're you're a famous person you make a lot of money but how do you just notice four and a half million dollars from your account is just not there it's gone that's a little weird like how do you how do you know that like this dude that's like basically your best friend since 2018 that like it, I remember hearing uh I think it was John Boy put out a video like or maybe an article I read, this isn't just a normal friendship. Ipe, when he was with the Angels, there when they were with the Angels, Ipe was contracted kind of like with the Dodgers. He was a employee of the Dodgers or of the Angels at the time. And uh, when the lockout was happening, Ipe technically could not have any contact with Shohei because organizations could not talk to players at all in any capacity, coaches, anybody. Ipe quit. Ipe quit the, the Angels in 2020 just so he could still, like, you know, be around Shohei, talk to Shohei, and then when the lockout ended, he went back. This isn't just a regular like, oh, he's just a translator, like what the D-backs have for their team. Like this is this is a really close friendship. I don't think like it's a little weird that Shohei would have zero clue at all. Like that the Ipe wouldn't have brought it up once. That like to, for him to get the access to his accounts and for Shohei to have zero clue at all that any of this was going on yeah. is a little weird. I, don't I think, think Shohei was doing I anything think, malicious, but it's yeah, just I think weird. he asked. I I think he either he told him what was going on and Shohei offered, or he asked, he's like, Shohei, I know you got some money. I'm in pretty deep. Can you do he me? He could have not even told him it's for gambling. He could have been like, Hey, I'm having some financial issues. You know, like I could use some help. And maybe he wasn't like you know, Shohei could be a trusting friend. He's like, Hey yeah, man, I got you. Like Whatever you need, and then come yeah. to find out, I was like, you were in financial issues because of gambling. Yeah, that's entirely possible. Is that he didn't <clears throat> tell him what the debt was? He just said, yeah. "I'm in debt." Um, but you would think someone of Shohei's stature would have a financial person, yeah, that would be in charge of his money, not I just mean, Shohei. He kept his entire, uh, I'm gonna, gonna guess, engagement and marriage under wraps. For how long? Like the dude's life is so secretive, not in like a bad way. Like, oh, like let us know. Like he keeps his life under wraps. I feel like pretty well. That's yeah. That's where there's just some weird conflicting things with Shohei, like that we've seen of him as like a person, as a player. Or like, I don't think anything malicious. I don't think you know all this. But then it's like, how do you explain again the not knowing it, the where the money is? Like you're. Like you said, you've got to have some financial person that's checking on that. Like he still had his mom in charge of his uh, money when he was living in Japan because he didn't want to like worry about like finances and all that. He got like an allowance, even though he's getting paid like millions. Like I just I don't I don't strike him as the kind of dude that just has no clue. Four and a half million dollars is just oh no, I misplaced like me misplacing my keys. Oh, did I leave them in my? Did I leave my four and a half million in my living room? Or my other living room. I don't know. Like, Yeah, so we'll have to see if we get anything more over the next couple of weeks. Um, I know MLB is going to do their investigation, but I don't, I don't feel they're going to punish him because 
the sport needs him to yeah. grow the sport because he is it's the one thing major league baseball um needs to fix is to be able to market the sport like they're so bad at it like they don't have that one guy like nba has several players that they can do it with um nfl has several players baseball you know like who is the most yeah who is the best player and well even if you know who the best player is the mlb just sucks in marketing it where shohei is just such a big name itself like he doesn't the mlb doesn't need to market him shohei itself is his own marketing like he yeah, just, that's why people does, know who Shohei yeah. is, is because his marketing ability, his, it, it, him doing it, not Major League Baseball, him doing it himself. That's why he is completely fine making $2 million a year for 10 years because of all of the money he gets from endorsements. Oh, yeah. He's he's making probably like close to what he would have made if he wanted. Or well, maybe not. He probably was. 30 million, 40 million, I wouldn't be surprised. I don't know the exact numbers, but he's definitely well off enough just on his endorsements. So, yeah, that was, I would say, the big story uh, this week that really everyone in baseball was uh, talking about. So, um, moving on to our next topic, um, D backs made some more roster moves. Um, we're slowly slimming down. Very surprised that Haven has been. Uh, option to Reno. Like I did not expect that to happen, especially with Randall Grichik probably not making the opening day roster due to his injury. It was a uh, bone spurs, right? Yeah. I believe it was a uh, bone spurs that he got surgery for, I believe in January. Cause there hasn't been any news about him all, all month. So yeah. I don't think he's going to make it. I was like, Really, not even Paven. So maybe they're finally starting to realize Paven's a quadruple A uh, player. Like yeah, he's but, he's really good in triple A. He's just not good enough for MLB. And I I know we've, we've said it before. I have been a very vocal uh, criticizer of Paven in the past. And definitely I have too been... because I think he's mid at everything. Like yeah, he's a good and, but, baseball player, but he's but mid at everything. I want to see, and that's where. I just want to make it clear. I, I think I feel like obviously you're on the same page. Josh would be on the same page. Gabe is on the same page. A lot of Dimex fans are on the same page, but some people just sometimes don't understand. Pavens, like like with Nick, like they're great people. Like I'm not like rooting on like against them because like I like want to see them not have a job. I don't want to see them not succeed in like what they've like worked so hard in their life to succeed for. I want that to happen. But when the amount of opportunities they've been given for the team, like the Dimebacks and they just haven't done it in any of those, it makes me go, you know, I'd love to see you get an opportunity with somebody like Brandon Drury. Great example. Like, he went to other teams, struggled for a little bit, uh, got his eyes fixed, and I think he had a migraine issue. And look at that, had, like, an insane bounce back year. Yeah. Like, guys like that, it, i like to see them go on and prove that they can, they can be. I mean, again, like, Pavin can hit Major League hitting, depending on how well he can hit Major League hitting is different. But I think he would do well on a different team. I just, I don't know. I, I think he's just in Dimebacks limbo hell right now. Kind of like where Jake McCarthy is borderline going to be. Like, can't keep him in Reno forever. You can't always just, like, try to I justify two and a half weeks of mediocre play at a major league level that could. Trade Pavin. Get yeah. something. Like, get something for Pavin at least. Even so. if you don't trade him, like, I wouldn't be surprised if they, like, or they straight up go, hey, you know, we want to, like, Kind of like what they did with uh, Elvis, where they're like, "Hey, we respect you and your time. We want to give you an opportunity to like to land on your feet, find another place. We're gonna, you know, let you go now." Where, yeah, they could trade him, but maybe if they go, "Hey, we're gonna let you go," so you can kind of like, I mean, I guess they'll have to go through waivers first, but I don't know. Maybe that way you can go to a better situation, so it's not just the D backs just going for a draft pick or, or not draft pick, just going for nothing in return or cash. Because like, what, what's the value you can really get out of Paven? Like, that's like. I think he's a good outfielder and a team like Kansas City or Oakland. I think he could be – I think he, he needs more consistent at-bats. Yeah. He's not going to get that on this team right now. His one year, I believe, of consistent at-bats was 2021. 
when yeah. he was our Beth hitter. Beth, Beth, wow, I was typing Paven Smith when I was saying that. When he was our best hitter, I believe. But oh, yeah, set again consistency. But I just don't think he's gonna get it here because his main position at first base, I'll be blocked by Walker. We have way too many outfielders that are actually like really good defensively in the outfield to kind of justify yeah. that. Not gonna lie. But yeah, I, I just huh. I want to see him go somewhere, get some time. But he's a really good insurance policy to have in Reno in the event we have a injury in the outfield. Like I do yeah. feel comfortable with him in like short spurts. It's the him getting three to four at bats for like several months in a row that just sounds yeah. like it's just not um it's just not gonna work. So um other moves were made. Uh Andrew Saul Frank was also optioned. Uh, that one was surprising. I I actually had both Paven and and Andrew Salfrank on my final twenty six man uh, roster, so that will not be uh, correct. So I'm a little I'm a little butthurt that, <laughs> that final roster prediction, which I put together like the second week at camp. Yeah, you did that really early. Um, and I didn't tell you guys who it was because I was trying to keep it a secret because I thought we might do it. Um, but we're kind of just going to breeze through it here uh, later in the episode. Um, as you said, uh, they released Elvis Andrews. Um, I I don't know why they brought... I, I, I think they just wanted to get a closer look to see if maybe he was worth the backup shortstop third base position. Um, but Blaze was like, nah, man, I got that. Yeah, like, I think that was a... Everyone but Blaze was really doing well. And they're like, you know, we don't want to make this entirely clear that it's Blaze's spot, so we'll bring in competition. Yeah, and I think Andrews, I I wonder if he'll wait a couple weeks to see if he gets any other offers, but I could see him retiring. Elvis Andrews has had a fantastic career. So. Yeah, he's been around a long time. So um, I, I don't know if it's Hall of Fame worthy, but he had a pretty good uh, career. And then they option uh, they reassigned Jose Castillo to minor league. Camp. He was never going to make That was strictly a spring training arm. Like he's yeah. just, he is not a major league pitcher. So uh, those were uh, the moves that were made. And we got some real bummer news. Um, Erod. Um, is going to start the season on the IL with that lap strain. Yeah. Um, Thankfully, so that it doesn't is... sound too bad, but it's still not what we wanted to hear. No. No, because we we brought him in to be our third starter. I mean, he could still, to be honest, we needed a third starter for the postseason. So if he misses the first two weeks of the month, but it's still good to go in August, September, October, I'm fine with that. Yeah. Um. So our whole like thing we've talked all spring training is who's talking with Tommy Henry, Ryan Nelson. Well, it looks like you both are now. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Um, so Fly will probably move to the three. And I would probably put Tommy Henry in the four just so that we don't have righty, 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 lefty. Like it'll be nice. You could do a righty, lefty, righty there. Yeah. Uh, three through five. So um, I think Tommy Henry now ends up I I I still thought Ryan and Henry were gonna make the opening day roster. One was just gonna be the pen, but I think they're both. It's pretty obvious they're both gonna be starters. Yeah. Ryan has definitely Ryan Ryan has looked phenomenal. Ryan has really like, yeah, two six six ERA and in twenty innings pitched. He is he is striking guys out. Strikeouts. Twenty. That's strikeouts. the big thing to me. That was my, I was like, you got to put guy if he can put guys away, he can get you, if he can get you five innings, that's huge. If he can get you six, that's huge. He already has about, I think, so last year he had 96 strikeouts in the entire year of 2024 and 144 innings. In 20 spring training, again, spring training, can't really fully compare stats, but still, in only 20 spring training innings, he's already at 26 strikeouts. So almost can, under like a third. If he can do nine per every, every nine in innings pass, that's fucking that 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 is huge. Yeah. So I, I remember seeing uh, Jesse's tweet from PHNSD Bex because uh, I, I wasn't I was 
playing MLB yesterday. You know, got the got the MLB bug, so I was not watching the D-backs game. But I opened Twitter and I saw that Ryan had like what seventeen whiffs and something like that yeah. yesterday. And like, which that's that's insane. Like getting like five to ten whiffs is usually like wow, that's a, you had some pretty good swing and missed up. But seventeen on a guy who's literally we've been begging to get some kind of Secondary. strike a swing and miss strikeout pitch like like uh i think again jesse and they're talking about in the show ryan nelson his fastball plays really well especially like up in the zone like it something about it is kind of like paul seawalls where it's just it's hard to hit pitchers can know it's coming but it's still just the way it moves at him is just harder to hit he gets a nice slider to go along with that like he had back when he was i believe in oregon in college like he was drafted with those two pitches, like his fastball slider were his wipeout pitches. That's why he was so good in college. But he just – obviously, college, major league is different. Seems like he might have finally figured it out. And if he can do this in the regular season, nah. If only he could have done this in game four of the World Series. Oh, he, he did – he went five and two-thirds. That wasn't his fault. He didn't start he the game. started. Yeah, yeah, he should have started. If he would have started and been able to do <laughs> it, it shouldn't yeah. have been an opener. But yeah, um, yeah, I just hope the the Erod situation, um, because a lot of people were like, "Is this another Mad Bum signing?" And it started to look like that, and then he got hurt. But I, I don't think it will be. Um, I think I think, it's a I think yeah, Mad I think. Bum, thankfully. So, um, so yeah, uh, our next topic here. Um, we got some announcements of D-backs working on stadium changes. Um, we obviously know about the new lights. Um, so that's, I think that's, uh, pretty cool. And we do have a video, um, courtesy of PHNX, uh, D-backs where look at the, like, look at this light show. Like, this is pretty, this is pretty cool. We got Paul Siebel there on the big screen. Jump around um, playing in the background. So obviously yeah, like, right now, but I mean, we don't want to. We don't want. We don't want to get a. Oh yeah, we strike. don't want the copyright. But for the like, if you guys haven't seen it on Twitter, it's again the stadium's empty, so it's gonna echo. It sounds like it's gonna get wild in there. I'm excited. Well, especially with the roof closed, it just Trouble. sound doesn't go. The sound has nowhere to go. So um, I'm very. And then I think I saw something where. They plan on improving the roof by the start of next season. They they also apparently do have, according to their call, maybe that's where my confusion was, is that catch-all system next season when they're getting it in or like full-on fix the roof. Because I, I've always – again, my, my assumption was if they – like their, their plan is to still just get the regular roof fixed like they originally were before they went to the playoffs this last year. But Derek Hall talking about some catch-all system that uh, basically solves the safety issues to where they can actually open the roof with fans inside. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that. I, I uh, wasn't sure if the because the way he sounded or like worded it, it sounded like they have it already ready. But then they're also like, oh, we'll have that ready for next year. So maybe they're expecting again. I hope so. Maybe they're expecting another deep playoff run. So like, hey, we're not going to have time to get the roof fixed. So we're just going to go with the the quick fix. So then opening day next year, we're good to go. Or it's something that it takes them a couple of weeks to actually fix it. And with the season starting, they just don't. They don't like, have time. Gonna, yeah, like there's going to be people in there consistently for the next six months. Um, so I I think that's what it is, is they just, it came too close to the start of the year where they just can't get it fixed because no one can actually be at the stadium to uh, fix it. Um, yeah. And another thing uh, Derek Hall uh, said in the last week is that the games not only will they be streaming on dbacks.tv, they are working. Major League Baseball is on the rights to air it on actual TV and cable, like cable and satellite, so that you don't. Ha- if you have somehow the station is going to be available, probably on for those uh, locally, like on Cox. So then you don't have to purchase because a lot of people were pissed about that. They're like, "I'm already paying for TV. Why should I have to pay another?" hundred dollars um to watch a local team i'm like i get it no i don't want to either um but no they've said this like three times over the last month 
I just don't think people have been paying attention. Like, but the thing is, it's it's Major League Baseball is negotiating the rights to be able to do it. So there's nothing the D-backs can do. They said that they are working on it. And Derek Hall said it, those negotiations could be, be ongoing up until opening day. So it, it could be something like they announce the day of. And like, oh, by the way, it's now going to be on Cox this channel or Dish or DirecTV on this channel. That way you don't have to. Um, I've already purchased it, so I don't really care. <laughs> um, because I was like, yeah, it may or may not happen. But then, like, what if it's on a channel that I don't get because I have Hulu Live? That's how I watch all of my TV is on Hulu Live. So, um, and, and I know a lot of the stations. Um, yeah, and Josh, like, put it on YouTube TV. Because <laughs> that's what Josh has. <laughs> But uh, luckily, one of us has d uh, TV, and so we can all make sure all of us watch it. Um, so, yeah, it'll be uh, very fun. So I figured we talk about it now. Uh, final roster predictions. So I'm going to go over the list that I wrote down originally. So it was Gallon, Kelly, Erod, Fott, Nelson for starters. My bullpen was Seawald, Ginkle, Thompson, Castro, Saul Frank, Mantiply, and Henry. So I can let's see. Can I yes I can. I can do this. And then boom. That way everyone can see it. So as we see here. And then catchers I put Gabby and Barnhart. Um infielders. I, as soon as I saw Blaze play that first week, I'm like, all right, Blaze is our utility guy. So I got Walker, Marte, Perdomo, Suarez, and Blaze. And then outfield, uh, Guriel, Thomas, Carroll, McCarthy, Pavin, and then the two DH spots, which for some reason it's not showing, but it's Jock and Gridget. So um, I feel I did pretty good. Like most of this is going to be true. Um, I didn't. Obviously, I missed on Saul Frank and uh, Paven. Uh, Erod doesn't count because he's injured. Like yeah. he's still going to be on the opening day roster. Um, so yeah, um, that was really like I like and again. I I thought Saul Frank would be on the roster just because having the lefty, the postseason success. I would have penciled Kyle in Nelson is probably going to take his spot. Yeah, which un- understandable. Like that's I figured like. The lefty battle was pretty tough because they, I believe, they usually only carry like two in the bullpen. So, like, Mantiply is hard to because just it's one of those where one of the guys have been there for a while in the last mm-hmm. few years. Like, it's hard to just fully replace them. Like, if man, this might be a make or break here for Mantiply, depending on what happens again. If we have Bacchus, if we have Saul Frank, we have other lefties that are ready, you know, chopping at the bit. Um, but I you know, I, I definitely would have penciled him in there, but I can see why Kyle Nelson took his spot. He doesn't have options. Saul Frank does. Uh, the the Payton one definitely was surprising. I I would have agreed with you. Like, I didn't see any chance that Paven wasn't as a backup bench spot to start opening day. I 100% thought he would be on the opening day roster. So I'm very curious who took Paven's spot. Are uh, we plays? <laughs> No, but there's still one more spot. Does it go to Jace or Rivera? Oh, what I mean, it, at that point, I think it comes down to you got to look at the okay, like line of construction. <laughs> like, uh, Josh right just answered the question because Rivera has no more options. It's Rivera. Yeah, but does Jace too? Like Jace, Jace is a major leaguer though. Like I don't think you're gonna send him down. Like maybe you release him. You're, I think you're gonna have to release one of the two or put one of the two on way. Is it possible that they they don't Kyle Nelson doesn't take Saul Frank and they go Jace and Rivera? One lucky both of them. Uh that would give no, because I think you have to have 12 bullpen. Yeah. So, n- never mind. So yeah, no, it'll be Kyle. No, you don't you can have 12. I think you can have 12. Is it 12? So I think you can't have a – it's either 12 or 13. 
I don't think you can have a minimum of. A, I think you have to have. I think a, you have thirteen pitchers, including your starters. No, but what I'm you can saying have bullpen pitchers is if they don't, since they sent Saul Frank down, and they if they don't add Kyle, that puts them that at eleven. Oh, bull, oh like eleven extra uh, uh, position player than a pitcher. I know what you mean. I know correct. You mean. I think you still have to have a minimum of twelve pitchers. You just can't have more than it's either twelve or thirteen. Yeah, I don't think you can go extra hitter or an extra pitcher. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I can see them doing that to start off the the series against the Rockies. To be honest, to start the season, they might think, "All right, what's better to have? Do we need more bullpen arms for that first week, or do we need more hitters?" And I'm like, "Well, Rivera and Jace aren't exactly great hitters." And to be honest, that first week, your main starter should be playing that first week. After that, when you want to give guys rest is when I think you start doing matchups. Um, yeah. So I, I'm wondering if Jock will get every start at DH, regardless of the matchup, or is he still going to be only facing righties? Opening day will be <clears throat> will be interesting because obviously Rocky's having Kyle Freeland as mm-hmm. an opening day starter. Uh, I I wouldn't be surprised if Tori just being like, hey, we signed you to be our main DH, like you know, it's there's a lefty on the bump, but hey, you're our opening day DH, get out there. Like maybe he drops him in the lineup. I hate when managers do. I'm like, don't do matchups opening day. People are going to opening day to see that the, the yeah. big time A lineup. You put your stars out there, regardless of the matchup. So I think yeah, I think Jock starts uh, opening day, or I feel like he should. Um, I just, yeah, I, I just, I didn't think they'd actually not have Paven on the opening day roster. I just thought they'd do it as a, for a backup first baseman. That's why I, I also think Rivera will get it over Jace. Cause I think Rivera plays first base and apparently he plays shortstop. I didn't know that when I saw that on a lineup, like a week ago, I'm like, wait, Rivera at yeah, shortstop. Cool. Tori's been trying to that's that's kind of what makes me like I wouldn't be surprised if they go more leaning on the bullpen aspect just because the first week mm-hmm. facing the Yankees, the Yan- like the Rockies four games and the Yankees three right after. Like you could want the extra bullpen just for all that. And I mean, Domo your shortstop, could tell your second baseman. Obviously, you hang you know, your third baseman. Walker. What was it? No, I was just saying, and then Walker at first. Yeah, yeah, sorry, Walker. I thought you said Water. I was like, wait, what? What? Did we get somebody named Waters? My bad. Um, And then, yeah, Walker at first. So you have Blaze as your, obviously, your backup shortstop. And then you have one more. Depends on the, I think, because Jace, I feel like, is better at second base. And I feel like Rivera is better at third base. Mm -hmm. But I feel like Blaze could cover third base if need be. Where and like even second base if we need be, like that's where Blaze kind of does what Jace and Emmanuel Rivera do defensively. He's just better. <laughs> He's, He's just better, better offensively. He's just better, offens- He's just better offensively. Where I could see them being like, it, depending on if they want to be ballsy, like and go, you know, we want to start the year with the extra bullpen arm. We feel like confident we're not going to be platooning that much. Like again, we're probably going to see. Rivera, Domo, Cattell, Walker, that starting infield for at least the, I'd say the three of the four against the Rockies. And then most at likely, least. and then most likely yeah. at least two of the three against the, I feel like every, anytime there's a Wednesday, a day game getaway, there's always one platoon every game. I, I just feel like that's just a deep. For me, the starting nine should be consistent for a while. Like we, no offense to Blades. I don't know if Blades, got, Blades might be lucky to get one at battle week. And it kind of yeah. sucks for him. That's why um, I could see like but, the Sunday against the Rockies and then the Wednesday against the Yankees. Maybe he gets like a plate appearance or like they throw him in the nine hole, like to sub in for like if, if if there's a like if what Nestor Cortez for the Yankees, if he's pitching against us and they want to be like, hey, we want to try to get in a little more pop against the lefty. That one blaze. Yeah. Um I think what they'll if they decide to go and add Kyle Nelson, I think it's Rivera. Mainly due to the fact that Rivera can play third and first, Blaze can play short and second. So they'll have a backup for each infield position. I don't know. 
years past, third base has been a platoon. It's, it's not going to be a platoon situation anymore with Suarez. Suarez plays every day. That man played 162 last year. The only way that he doesn't play is injury. Or if Tori Lavolo actually like ties him to his chair in the in the clubhouse and like is just sitting in his locker the entire game, just like Tori, let me out. Come on. Seriously. Like, I de- I think, yeah. And we know that the outfield is gonna be pretty uh consistent. Um Corbin's playing every freaking day. Or he should play every freaking day. Um, I don't think there's too many lefties that we'll see, so Alex should be playing pretty much every day. I just don't know if Tori will sit Alec um, versus lefties. lefties? That, that, that's my only thing is that he might do that. Obviously, he's not doing it opening day against Cal. I hope not. Look. I hope not. Hey, Josh, first of, let's I, go. I had to think about it. I'm like, all right, I'm about <laughs> to say this. It is Alec. So I was like, I got it this time. Woohoo! Progress, um, baby. Let's go. And I. I think Guriel will probably most likely play every day. That that's why I think that first week, week and a half, we're gonna see the same nine guys out there for most of it. It's after that where if some guys are struggling, um, that's when they start making changes to the everyday lineup. But that yeah. that first week, you should go with the guys that you had set out this offseason. Like give them a chance to start and get hot. Like that's what I truly feel you should do to start the season. But we'll see what Tori does. Um, I'm this this bullpen. If we get the bullpen we got in August, September, October, we could start so hot. Yeah. Like we Because that we, was our big thing we, last year. Like the first like the first half of the year, bullpen was a mess. If you would have asked me last May. Oh, yeah. The best unit on the team is our bullpen. I'm like, hey, can I have that drug you're smoking? Because you are yeah. out of your damn mind. Put down but that September gas and October, machine. without a doubt, our best. Because we Literally had a dedicated... Like yeah. Dedicated seventh guy was Ryan Thompson. Dedicated eighth was Kevin Ginkle. And then P- Paul Seawald was the ninth. So, like, it... it it's without a doubt, like, that's that's when I know people said, oh, Dimebacks limped into the playoffs. They shouldn't be in the playoffs. They made it in. That's funny. Uh, they lost the last series of the year. <laughs> it's still what made it in. hilarious. I guarantee you the amount of people that are, like, John Boyce and these other ones, like, oh, they barely, they made the, they took the last spot in the playoffs that wouldn't even been there three years ago. It's like, yeah, guess what? In the 90s, they changed how the fucking baseball playoffs work too, and the Yankees snuck in on the last fucking wild card spot. Like, guess what? That happens in sports. Like, there's going to always be a team that gets that last spot. Play better baseball, and, like, you can get that last spot. Like, again, you see you see what happens? You get hot. The Cubs, if they would have not, like, sucked dick the last month, they could have gotten hot. If the Padres didn't eat dick for the first two months of the year, they could have easily taken that second. Or if the Padres could actually win one run games and extra yeah, inning like, games, like they would have like, taken our spot without yeah, a doubt. Like, they would have taken that spot. Like it's it it sucks. Don't get me wrong; they made the last spot, but like, dog, this isn't the first time the MLB has ever expanded the playoffs. And I guarantee you, it's a lot last. of a lot of a lot of people that complain about it, their favorite team has benefited of expanded playoffs. Yeah, I still think that the divisional round should be seven. I don't like um, how the divisional is best of five and the league championship is best of seven. It's, yeah, it's making both um, like seven. So, um, so yeah, I'm pretty excited here um, for the season to start. I love baseball season. Like, it puts me in such a rhythm once the season starts. I'm like, all right, check my phone. All right, what time is game today? Okay. Make sure I, I'm doing nothing. Like, literally, that's the whole reason why I I don't – I never got into streaming video games is because once baseball season starts, I like to focus on watching the game. So I'll be playing as I'm watching the game. Like, that's literally what I do Yes, yeah, is I have an app on my iPad where I score the games because I think that's one of the most fun things to do at a baseball game is 
actually do the actual scorekeeping. So I have an app that literally I do it for every every Diamondback game. So it's just nice to kind of watch the games and uh, do that. Um, so that it, it's kind of hard to do if I were to be like streaming on Twitch. Oh yeah, and watching the game on. and playing. I'm like, nope. That um, sensory overload. Sensory yeah. overload uh, for sure. Um, so very very excited uh, for the season. Uh, to start, oh, we got one final topic here. Um, actually, before the, before the there was one kind of bringing it back to some of the new D backs changes. I did catch on the PHNX D back show. The Derek and Jesse didn't get a video of it, but Derek said he was like he heard with his own ears. Uh, Derek Hall mentioned that there's a possibility that the Diamondbacks next City Connect uniforms could be purple and teal. <laughs> Let's so, go. I like that a lot. I do too. I, I, um, ah, I so, uh, I don't. I don't know if it's me. I'm not a fan of how the white home jerseys look in MLB The Show. Oh, it's funny because last night I was playing and I was like the entire time I was like, man, these look fucking great. I love the 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 cream like off white look. I don't know why it looks. It, it it gives me like a classic uniform vibe. I love the black the black ones. Oh my god, those are so fire! Dude, the I, black ones are so good. I'm I know that I'm gonna get one of those before the end of the season. I'm getting that black and teal one without a doubt because it looks. Oh my god, it looks so good. I'm very curious as to which one they're gonna wear on opening day. Um, I think they're 100 so. gonna go with the new white. Yeah. Because everyone's will. already seen the, the, the black and teal for spring a bunch. So they'll probably go the so, white. I and I know la- so do they still have the Serp Yentis jerseys? Mm-hmm. One more yeah. Okay. So I'm wondering if there's gonna be like last year where every Friday home game they wear the Serp Yentis. I think that's what they're probably gonna do. So, so that way they can uh, pencil in like they could do the like if for you know opening week against the Rockies, Thursday can be the the home whites. Friday can be the Serpientes. Saturday can be the black with the teal. And then Sunday they can either do the home white again or what they'll probably do is they'll probably use the red, like the alternate, and just use that with white pants. Yeah. So we'll uh, we'll see because I'm going Thursday and I'm going Saturday because I got to get that bobblehead. And I'm getting there as probably at least an hour before gates open. (laughs) I'm getting there like (laughs) 3.30. Right? Like, you have to, like, that's the thing with those giveaways. You got to get there so early. You literally because have to be, like, it's, you have to camp out. Like, it's a Black like, Friday. So. If you get there, like, when the gates open, uh, the line at the front gate is is already down the street. It's already down the street. So, you're, good luck. So, yeah, I'm going to have, that's what I had to do uh, last year. But last year, I was a season ticket holder, and they got in 30 minutes early due to the general public. I won't be able to do that. So uh, that is unless I uh, go with Brett. <laughs> it's like I have my own ticket. I'm gonna probably have because like even my parents are like we don't go to, like to that many games. Like it's it's a it's like a family thing. So she's like instead of wasting the tickets, find people to go with. So there's a good chance. Not gonna lie. So uh, very excited. Uh, moving on. Um, for those of you that follow the Max, you know that we have a documentary that uh they worked on and uh release it's called snakes alive we've had two episodes and dear lord watching it back i get so hyped like these first two episodes have been amazing i know a lot of people complain they didn't like how the first one ended up i'm like but that's how telling a story works yeah you you hook them in and they did the same thing with the end of episode two it's right at the start of the divisional series. I'm like, it's good storytelling. It makes you want to come back. Yeah. So it, it um, gives you that like, oh, where are they? Where are they going to end it next? What are they going to talk about in the next one? I mean, we know, but it's like, what are they going to say though? It's so, so cool though. I'm I'm a big fan of it. It's it's gotten it's literally like gotten me so hyped that last night, like when we were talking before the the show, I played MLB the show till like one in the morning. I was literally sitting here doing conquest stuff and on the side i just had like i was literally had the whole entire replays of the games like the entire broadcast on youtube there's a channel that uploads the entire thing like all of it 
like every every bit of the game for every pitch and went through like the one the the entire first game against the Dodgers listening to that you know the four home runs oh that like, first inning and and cuz i again i was there for most of the games and then like seeing most of the re- replays were on my phone for that i literally just put on my headphones turned it up and just hearing like the the crowd like the crowd genuinely just like i was ready to run through my goddamn door like a fucking right. bulldozer at one in the morning for a YouTube video of a game that happened five months ago. That's how goddamn hyped that run got me, or that's how goddamn hyped that Snakes Alive video got me. Yeah. Um, I'm very curious if episode three is just going to be game one and game two, because game three should be its own video. I think they're going like, to end the next episode like right when Domo goes to swing or like maybe right when uh Fott goes out to the mound so they can start like, you know, start it off with Fott and like all the hype and then lead into the four homers. And then the episode will probably end right when the like Gabby hits his fourth home or right when uh Paul throws the final pitch to get Kike out. Yeah, like. I can't wait to just watch and them what they got from the four guys that hit those homers. Oh my god! Um, like it's so great. Um, like I just this team was just so. It forced the Dodgers to spend a billion dollars. We literally broke the NL West. The power of friendship and the power of eighty-four wins made the Dodgers spend one point two billion dollars. Made the Giants go and like. Spend a bunch, which again, they've had a really good offseason. They went and spent a bunch of money. The Rockies are existing, as you know. Course Field's awesome, yay. Uh, the Padres have been making moves. Rockies like, are gonna have team. triple digit uh losses, so yeah. Like, they, I mean, as Brett said, it Giants spent more money. They got Blake Snell two years, 60... 64, 60, no, 66. It was like 33 a year, I think. That's Scott insane. Boris, Scott Boris, you failed all of your clients. Like yeah. you aimed for here. Most of them got something here. You had to accept it down here. The best way I could say it is Scott Boris <clears throat> is that baseball card collector that buys a card for like 150 and is like, <clears throat> this is my investment right here. I'm so, I'm, I'm going to get my money and double this. And then two months later tries to sell it. And someone's like, Hey, like I'll give you like a buck 20. He's like, Nope. I'm standing firm at 250. And then six months later, the card is now $25. He's like, well, I'll get something for it at least. Yeah. And I think the big problem with Snell, yes, you won the Cy Young. But if you just look, yes, you 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 got wins. You struck guys out. You had a low ERA, but walks is a big thing. Letting guys on base is a big thing. And I think that's a lot. I think that scared a lot of teams off because apparently the Yankees offered him more money several months ago. He just didn't take it. And I'm wondering if they asked him again or Scott asked, so is that deal? Nope. We'll give you two years, 60 million. Um, But hey, Snell's not the only Scott Boris client on the Giants. Matt Chapman is also there. Um, to be honest, I re- what I would love to see, Dodgers finish first, D-backs finish second, but D-backs get the first wild card. Giants finish third in the West, and they get the third wild card. Uh, they beat whoever the central um, winner is, so it's probably the Cubs um, or the Reds. Um and Giants win the wild card, and they beat the Dodgers in the divisional. Complete, I, I just the, complete the trifecta, please. I just need the Dodgers to just miss the playoffs in general. I need it to be the one, the, the one, the one time where the stars seem to align. They they spend all this money, and then the season starts with the Shohei gambling drama, and it ends with them missing the pl- like just barely missing the playoffs, losing the division for the first time in like well, I mean, not first time, but for the second time in ten years, barely missing the playoffs after having the goddamn Avengers on your baseball team. That's what I need. 
But that's, so that's what, the hater in me. What could happen is MLB finishes their investigation and they suspend Otani for like half the season or the full season. That it would be the biggest disappointment of any team is if this Dodgers team <laughs> doesn't make the playoffs. Because yeah. I think they're projected at 103 and a half wins. So 104 wins. Projections don't ever like want to project over like 96, even if you're the Braves or the Dodgers. Dodgers are projected at 80, 83 and a half. Yeah. They basically just took what they won the last The Cardinals year. have a higher projected win total, which I don't understand. No. What yeah. did the Cardinals do this offseason that makes you think they're better than they were last year? They brought in Lance Lynn. Who gave up four home runs? Sorry. <laughs> they also signed Sonny Gray, who's also starting this season on the IL. We also almost signed Sonny Gray, apparently. Yes. Yes, we did. Um, Which, what, could you imagine if we signed? It's funny because I remember uh, Jesse and them being like, oh, maybe we would have gone for Sonny Gray for this money and all that. Both him and Erod ended up on the IL to start the season. Doesn't matter. So they switch. Yo, what is that whole? Because Josh brought it up in in our chat. They switched to coconut oil. Did you see that that tweet going around where Nolan Gorman fixed his back issues? Because and again, the way it was worded, it said he went from a popcorn that was like from I think peanut oil to coconut oil or the other way around. But he basically switched up whatever oil of a food that he was eating, and he's like, "Yeah, my back is just my back problems have just gone away. It's a miracle." I saw, like, yeah, I. So I saw something about Nolan Gorman popcorn. That's all I saw. Yeah, I, was, I, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't look into it uh, whatsoever. I thought it was an um, onion article. No, it was real. Hey, good for him. Lost eight pounds. Maybe that's what I need to do. Just eat the the coconut oil popcorn. That's funny though. So yeah, no, I'm very excited for the season. Um, it's gonna be. I, unlike last year, last year, my expectations was like, let's get like 70 wins. Cause on paper, I was like, eh, this team, we still didn't have a closer. We still had Mad Bum. We had Davies. I was like, oh, this is going to be a fun year. Yeah. And then they were competitive. Like that first half, Domo had a fantastic first half of the year. Um, made the all star team. First half, some might say. Uh, don't say that to uh, Met fans. They're still a lot better that uh, he got in over Lindor. Um, but no, it like right now they're projected at 83 and a half wins. Um, I did put some money on Cattell to win MVP because he's having an insane spring. Okay. And I figured, why not? It can hurt. I think I put like 20 bucks. Um, so we'll have to see. I did really well on my bets for the team last year. Um, I got their win total last year. I got winning the National League. I almost got it winning the World Series. Like, I did so well. Um, so, yeah, uh, I'm very uh, curious. Um, so, I just thought that we kind of give our right before the season final D back uh, uh, predictions here. Um, so, uh, 83 and a half wins. I think they hit the over. I think 87 wins. I think 87 wins. Um, so I think, yeah. And I would I love them to win the National League West? Absolutely. But I'm, this until we get some sort of announcement that Otani has been suspended, I can't see the Dodgers winning any less than 100 games. I just can't. Um, the only way that the D-backs win the West is if everything goes the way it should. <clears throat> yeah. Like, like literally they would need they Gallen, would need to keep like Gallon is Cy out. Young form. So Gallon gets like 20 plus wins. Kelly gets 15 plus wins. Fought gets like 13 wins. Like if and I know it's a lot of people's bold prediction is that Fought will be a breakout player this year. I have to if we get playoff fought for a whole year, National League West, I think, is entirely possible. Yeah. I really, I really, really do. Because we know what studs Gallon and Kelly are. They are innings eater. They, every start, will, you know, five innings. Sometimes it's six, sometimes it's seven. Um, I hope Kelly fit, uh, fix his cramping situation because that, 
He that could be a low key dark horse candidate to be in like a top five Cy Young finish. If you can just say so, healthy. And I think Ginkle will still be doing his Ginkle thing. Kinky uh, with his stinky. I, I think Seawall could get 30, 35 plus saves uh, pitching for a full year. Um, so excited. Um, Corbin, I could. Hot take. I want Corbin to have a 40 70 season. I know that seems crazy that Corbin could hit 40 home. He hit 25 last year I'll and he had a period. 40 seems 40 home runs for Corbin seems like. That's why I said bold. Bold yeah, prediction. Okay, okay, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I said, I. I still think he does like twenty five seventy. I really do, especially with the new stolen base rule that they have this year, where, where guys, you can't block the base. They they definitely need to rework it. Like I I get the the intention of like because I I definitely can see where it leads to, you know, in a certain percentage hand injuries and you know people getting stepped on, jam things like that. I can I can kind of see it. But to the ones where, oh, the, the runner is beaten so bad by the throw that the fielder is standing there, and the umpire's like, nope, you're in the way. That's, he's safe. I'm like, okay, now that's just not baseball. So I'm wondering if it's like the home plate rule is you can't block it until you have the ball. So I yeah. think you just – which makes sense. Um, but you can't just put your – kind of like what I think Domo said he used to do it where – which would make – because, again, that's – if it's not a rule against it – you play it to your advantage, hundred percent. You put your foot in front of the bag, so it gives you two corners that they have to slide to, or mm-hmm. you even put your foot at the back corner, so they have to slide in to the inside part of the bag. Like it's just less, less area. It's it was smart, but I can kind of see why. Kind of like with the the blocking home plate, it's like you know you got to have the ball. You can't just be standing there, and like you know you have to give them a path. Once you have the ball, yeah, you can block the plate then. So yeah, I think D backs 87 wins. Uh KL is like 25 probably 25 60. I think 25 70 is a bit it's a bit high. Um I think Walker 30 100. You can book that. Yeah. Like you can take that to the bank. Where he's hitting with Cattell and Corbin on one two. Now who goes one two depends on the matchup, but I think those will be our top two. No, I feel. I honestly feel like it's going to be. Actually, I don't know. I would say Corbin Cattell, but Cattell is a pretty solid leadoff hitter. Just because he is, if he gets anything in the zone, he's going to attack that fucking. Good player. dude. If he gets the pitch he's looking for, it's over. Yeah, dude. which is is going to bad because there have been some times where the game starts, he gets one pitch, and he like pops up or grounds out, and you're like, one pitch really? But then there's the other times where the first pitch he sees, home run, double down the line. Or we're down by four and there's no one on and he swings like this face is loaded. I'm like, can tell, please stop this. Stop swinging out of your shoes, dude. And it'll be the show. And I'm like, I can make back all these runs in one swing. But there's nobody on base. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think Gino could hit up to 30 as well. Like, we're going to see a massive improvement of us being able to score. Last year, it was small ball. It was Get on base with first, steal second, base hit. I think we're going to slug a lot more this year with Jock, Gino, Walker, once Grichik is back. And I'm hoping that Alec um, has his power from the postseason. Because I think he had, what, four? Four Four homers? homers? Yeah, four homers in the playoffs. I think Gabby had, like, four in the postseason as well. Like, if both of them can have – because I think – Gabby had six like six homers all of last season. He gets four in the postseason. Yeah, oh god, I just even remember now, like, we're gonna get a playoffs. Season. Playoffs no with certain Gabby. players, just tur- they just turn it on. Oh, they yeah. just they take it I mean, to a whole nother level. Seager, look at Kyle Schwarber. Look at I mean Reggie Jackson back in the day. Yeah, like it is. It is. I'm so excited. I, I can't yeah, wait. Thursday can, can't get I can here. The any 80, I could see 87. Honestly, like, I'll be ballsy. My bold, I'm thinking 94. Again, that's oh, if everything goes well. That's that's if everything goes well. Like, they they beat up on the bad teams that they need to be beat up on. Like, 
You know, they 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 don't destroy they don't, the Rockies every yeah, time. They, go, like, they destroy the Rockies every time. They don't struggle against the like the A's. Like again, baseball's baseball. You will lose against teams that on paper you should beat. That's going to happen. I'm not saying they're like, oh, it's unacceptable if they don't beat every single bad baseball team. Like that's just not how sports work. But it shouldn't be like in the past where oh, we're struggling to win against these teams. Like like no, like prove that you are an actual like top NL team. And that's what if they do that, I could see 94 wins. I think realistically, I think 87 is actually perfect. I think that's yeah. right, like an improvement from last year. Where I mean, if you take, like you said earlier in the show, that first month or two of the season of the bullpen saves and the losses just because of them, and added on last year alone, you could have had. You take away wins. Castro's two blown saves against Atlanta, yeah, and we're 86 wins. Yeah, so that's why, wins. like. That's that's where why I'm like oh my bold like hey if we had the same like the same exact team and we added in our weak spots and we could have won 86 plus games last year easily I could see 94 again that's just if everyone has the same year carry it over to this year everyone everything falls into place you know properly yeah take out the J- July slump we don't drop below 80 or 90 wins like there was again there was a full two and a half or maybe not two and a half. I think it was what a month and a half long stretch where they were on pace to have nearly a hundred wins. Mm-hmm. And then again, they just hit the slump. Like, like, really, at, so yeah. the thing with that slump is everyone was slumping. No one was hitting. That was the problem. Hitting, pitching, defense, like, everything. If stuff. you're going to slump, you got to have at least one or two guys that, that are hitting. No one was hitting in those, in those stretches. That was the issue. Like, Anyone they put in, like we had like three hits through seven. I'm like, yeah, you're not gonna win games that way. Yeah. So. Yeah. Say so the the Corbin, I could see easily getting. Thir- I think 30 50 is pretty reasonable. I think that's a because I mean he had 25 50 last year, so I think 30 50, maybe even 30 60 is reasonable. Um, I'm gonna say a breakout. Jock hits. Well, not maybe not breakout, but I I could see Jock hitting like 25 homers because we face a lot of righties in the division. So he's going to see a lot. I feel like he's going to get a lot of playing time. Um, I think, honestly, Blaze is going to win the, the random again, bold prediction. I think Blaze is going to win the starting against lefties spot. I was about to say, if you say rookie of the year, I'm no, sorry. No, 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 no. Not rookie of the year. I was going to say like, start, like, either starting against lefties at shortstop or just – like I wouldn't say he's going to take Domo's job, but – Again, you never know how the season could go. I, I definitely see Blaze playing well enough to have it be like, hey, if you're facing a lefty, you put Blaze Alexander as your shortstop. Um, yeah. I think Castro, bold prediction, he's going to have a bounce back here. He's going to be better. Not not <laughs> a lot. He's not going to be all-star worthy, but I think he's going to be... I think he have won't have... Year. So I think he's not going to have the pressure of exactly. being going out all the time. That's Ginkle and Thompson. Yes. Like that was the, like Castro's a good, all, but you, he's not a pitch three times a week guy. He's not a closer. He's not a, a really high leverage, like reliever multiple times a week. Like he's the, like we were doing in the beginning of the year. If we had eight guys that threw gas and control, like if we had like Castro's and Martinez everywhere and they could just figure it out for one game a week. For yes, they'd too. Be, yeah, they, yeah, free us too. They'd be really good closers, but that's where it's like you they get, they get a little bit of pressure, and it's like they just can't find the zone. Definitely sucks, but no, I think my, like I said, my bold, bold one, Corbin, forty plus homers, seventy plus stolen bases, and also hits over three hundred. He does that. He's in the MVP race again. <laughs> Like he was last year. Um, yeah, easily. So, yeah, no, that's that's my bold, bold prediction for 2024. Corbin, 40 plus. Homers, 70 plus. Stolen bases. Yeah, I could tell easily top three MVP. And then I'm going to say Gallon and Kelly, top five Cy Young. Those are my bold predictions. If all four of those happen, like, uh, I could tell – and Corbin are top five in MVP voting, and Gallon and Kelly are top five in Cy Young. We have won the NL West. Yeah. I 
I I can guarantee you. Yeah, because that's, that's probably I mean. cl- like you said, ninety four wins, ninety five probably. Um, so yeah, uh, very excited, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode of D Backs Dispatch. Uh, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure to go ahead and follow our Twitter. Um, you'll want to stay up to date on that. Um, as that's where we'll be uh, posting when we're how the season's gonna work for our episodes. Um, whether it's after every game, after every series, uh, you'll want to make sure to stay tuned or hit the bell when you subscribe. Or if you're already subscribed, hit the bell because then you're notified uh, whenever we go live or when we upload a new video. That way you don't miss any of this great uh, content. We appreciate it. Let's have a good season, everyone. See you next time. We'll be right back.